You're welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel. I'm now answering question number two from the June 2024 Pure Mathematics P3 um, International A Level Ed Excel exam. And this question, we're going to have two parts to it. Part A is about algebraic um, fractions and algebraic division. And question part B is about integration. So I'll save this in two separate playlists, uh, two separate videos. One playlist will be for the paper. One playlist will be for the two different topics. Okay, so now, um, so first of all, we got this um, algebraic fraction, g of x equals 2x squared minus 5x plus 8 over x minus 2. And we want to write this in the form ax plus b plus c over x minus 2. So basically what we have here is we have an algebraic fraction, which is considered an improper fraction. It's called an improper fraction. Okay, an improper fraction is one, in algebra where the numerator has an order which is the same or less than the order of the denominator. And what do I mean by the order? I mean the highest power that it has. So this is a quadratic and this is linear. So the order of the numerator is greater than that of the denominator. So it is an improper fraction. So an improper fraction can be made into what's called a mixed number. You can say, I'll call it mixed number in inverted commas, All right? So it can, can be converted into a mixed number, which it comprises of a quotient plus a proper fraction, just like with normal numbers. Like if I say 11 over four, I have the number 11 over four, and I want to write this as a mixed number. Okay, you have the quotient, which is how many times the, denom the denominator fits into the numerator, which is two whole times. And then you have the remainder, which is going to be, Four times two is eight, so three over the original denominator. All right, so that's what this becomes. Now, in, in the maths that we do, we don't normally put the plus there, but the plus is implied when you put two and three quarters. It means two plus three quarters. That's what it actually means. Okay, so algebraic, uh, you know, fractions can be split up into a quotient and a proper fraction in the same way. So here we have the quotient part, and here we have the proper fraction part. Notice this is a proper fraction. The numerator is a integer, it's, it's a constant. And you have a constant over a linear, that's a proper fraction. The numerator is an order less than that of the denominator. And you have also a quotient, and the quotient will always be of the form where it's the difference between the order of the numerator and the denominator, okay, which is uh, linear. Now we don't really need to worry about that too much, I've just explained. Uh, it's not really that important right now, okay, because we can answer this question without even understanding any of what I just said. But basically, I want to give you some background behind it. Now, so for us to uh, rewrite this in, in this form, the probably the easiest way and the way that you will always use in P3, most probably would be using algebraic long division. So method one, we're going to use algebraic long division. Algebraic long division. Okay, now algebraic long division is pretty simple. You just take the denominator and write this, say outside the bus stop, and then inside you write the numerator, taking care not to lose or to miss out any any bits that are missing. So, for example, if you had um, if this was two x squared plus eight, and there was the five x term wasn't there, it was just two x squared plus eight, then we would put two x squared. And we put plus zero x and then plus eight. We'd have to put something in the in the place for the x because everything has to have its position. So this is for the x squared, this is for the x's, this is for the numbers. In this case, everything is there, so we don't have to worry. Just write it out in order. 2x squared minus 5x plus 8. So always write it in, in descending order, highest to lowest. All right. So if, if there's something missing or if, if it's jumbled up, write it in order always. Okay, so this is for the x squared. This is for the x's. This is for the constants. Okay, so now we're going to do the division. So how do you do the division? Well, we take the first term of this and the first term of this. And we can think about it in two ways. I like to say, what do we multiply by x to give us 2x squared? Well, we need a 2 and we need an x. And in fact, it's even better if you write that on top of the space for the x's. So x times 2x gives us 2x squared. X times 2x gives us 2x squared. 
Uh, or you can say 2x squared divided by x gives us 2x, whichever way you want to think about it. So now we multiply this 2x with these two terms. So 2x times x is 2x squared, and it should always end up the same as this, of course, because that's how you got it in the first place. And 2x times minus 2 is minus 4x. This will always, or some, I mean, this, this can be different. Most probably will be most cases. All right, so now we're going to subtract these two lines. When I when I subtract them, I like to put a minus sign here just to remind myself, because a lot of people will forget, um, especially in a question like this where there's a minus here as well. So you have minus 5x minus minus 4x, which is minus 5x plus 4x, which is negative x. And bring down the next term, which is plus 8. Always bring down the next term, just like when you did our, our long division in primary school. Now, same procedure again. We go through the same process again. So x times something gives us minus x. Well, that's minus 1. And then minus 1 times x is minus x. And minus 1 times minus 2 is plus 2. Okay, and now we do the same thing. We subtract. This will give us 0 as well. Minus x plus x is 0. And 8 minus 2 is 6. We're left with a remainder of 6. There's nothing left to bring down. This is the remainder. Okay. If the remainder was zero, then these, this would be a factor of that. That would be a factor of that. It would be like these two multiplied to give you this. But in this case, no, there's a remainder, so it's not a factor of that. That's why we end up with this, you know, remainder at the end. So now our quotient, our ax plus b, okay, is basically 2x minus 1. And our c is this 6. Our c is this six, that's the remainder. Okay, just like we had here, all right, the two is how many times four goes into 11, and this is the remainder, okay, when four goes into 11 is eight, that's the remainder. So that's the quotient, that's the remainder, that's the quotient, that's the remainder. So we can say that g of x is equal to the quotient, two x minus one, plus the remainder, six over x minus two. So there is our answer. Okay, so that's, but, but, um, I mean, basically the method that you would use. Most people will use this method and that's fine. Okay, now there's another method we can also use, which I'm going to show you as well. All right, and um, this is kind of like called comparing coefficients. Okay. Um, so I'll just show you that method. Just, I mean, this method um, will be something that we will ha be forced to use in P4 for certain types of questions. So it's a good idea to have some idea of how it works now. So basically, what we know, what we know is that this and this are identical. Right now, in this case, they've given us the form of what it should look like, which makes it a bit easier for us. All right. Um, and if they didn't give us the form, then I would just suggest just go straight for algebraic long division. Okay. Um, but sometimes, you know, you have to come up with this yourself. All right. Now, if, the, if, if it was that just, you know, they wanted you to express this as separate terms, then you would just do what I did in method one without, that would be easier. But sometimes, you know, you, they might not give you this form. And how do you know that this becomes in this form? Well, we know. As I mentioned earlier, that when you divide these two numbers, you get a quotient and you get a remainder, okay, because this is an improper fraction. The quotient will always be of the form of the difference between these orders. So you have order two, which is quadratic, order one, which is linear. If you subtract them, you get one. So our quotient must be linear. So it's going to be in the form ax plus b. The highest power is one, okay? And the fraction part must always be a proper fraction. So the numerator must be order less than that of the denominator. It can't be the same. If it's the same, then it's still not a proper fraction. It has to be an order less. So it has to be a constant. If this is linear, that has to be less than that, which is a constant. So that's how we get this form. Now, what we can do is you can multiply both sides by x minus 2, in which case you get 2x squared minus 5x plus 8 equals ax plus b times x minus 2. And you multiply this by x minus 2, end up with plus c. x minus 2 cancels. Um, if I multiply by x minus 2, okay, this cancels there and it's multiplied by that. Term. And here it's cancelled as well. So now what we can do is we can compare the coefficients. If you want to, you can expand this. This is quite easy, but 
Um, if it's a bit more complicated, then it's not really wise to expand it. You can just expand it in your brain almost. So you can see here that you got two x squared minus five x plus eight, and this is must be this is identical. This is identity is identical to this side. So we can see, for example, here the coefficients of x squared. On this side we have two. And on this side, the only x squared term you're going to get is when you multiply these two terms together. You have ax times x, that'll be ax squared. So straight away, we can say a is equal to 2. And if we compare the coefficients of x, the x term on this side is negative 5. And on this side, the x term, that won't be, that will be a constant term, but the x term will be when you do ax times minus 2, which is minus 2ax. I won't write the x part. Just the minus 2a part, just the coefficient. And when you do b times x, which is plus b. Now, we already know a is equal to 2. So from here, we can say minus 5 is equal to minus 2 times 2 plus b. So we have minus 5 is equal to minus 4 plus b. Add 4 to both sides. b is equal to negative 1. So we have b is equal to negative 1. And then we can compare the constants. The constants on both sides. Here we have 8. Now the constant from this bracket, when you expand it, will be minus 2 times b. So be minus 2b. And then you got the constant at the end, plus c. So we can find c now because we know b is minus 1. So we can say that 8 is equal to minus 2 times minus 1 plus c. So 8 is equal to 2 plus c. So c is equal to 6. So we have the values of a, b, and c. So we can say g of x, therefore, is equal to ax, so it's 2x, plus b, b is minus 1, so it's minus 1, plus c, which is 6, over x minus 2. So that's another way of doing the question. Both ways are perfectly fine. I think that most people would prefer the first way, but just for a, you know something different, just to show you how this works. And um, the fact that when you come to P4, we will have to use this technique in certain types of questions. Um, it's a bit of an introduction to it for, you, for, for now. Plus also the textbook for P3 does have some exercises using this kind of method. So it, it's, it's a good idea for you to have some understanding of it. So that's the answer to number 2, uh, A. Now 2B is all about integration. And I'm going to save that as a separate video so that it can go into a separate playlist for integration. So this video will be saved in the playlist for the paper, which will be up here and also in a playlist for algebraic fractions. The part B is going to be um, also saved in the same playlist as the one for the paper, so you can find part B you know, when, at the end of the video by clicking on this link. And it will also be saved under a playlist under integration and um, I guess reversing the chain rule, which we're going to discuss. All right, so um, if you'd like to you know, see the, the other part, click on the link at the end of the video up here. If you'd like to see the um, playlist dealing with uh, algebraic fractions, the link over here, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. And the video at the top here will tell you how to use my channel to find what you're looking for in a quick, efficient way. Thank you for watching and see you soon.